Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, Dr. Dalio here with another video tutorial. And uh, today we're going to be uh, uh, showing you, it's actually going to be a follow up of the uh, first uh, tutorial that I did on ANSYS nonlinear stress strain cast iron tutorial. And I'm basically going to follow up with this and make a part two video because some people were asking in the comments uh, to show how to actually make a chart of the output in ANSYS of the stress strain results. So if you remember from last time, uh, we had the input commands for our prop for our uh, cast iron data, and we want to now make a chart in ANSYS of uh, the results and see you know what's the maximum strain and maximum stress results, uh, and see if they actually coordinate with our input data. So. What we're going to do is we're going to actually open up the uh, previous project. So if you guys haven't seen the, the first part tutorial, I suggest you go look at this video first before continuing with this next tutorial. So in our first part, I'm just going to open it up here. Uh, we went through uh, the cast iron model. So here we insert the commands properties for the cast iron data. So here we put the tension data and compression data. And we did a quick mesh and uh, we went through the analysis settings, made sure large reflections was on, added a fixed support on the back, and, uh, and added a load, and then we got our strain, our maximum principal stress, and also uh, we, I think I went through uh, the custom uh, strain uh, uh, results in order for the plastic results, and, and also maybe went through the EPL1 and EPPL1 results with you. But I'll, I'll go through that actually again in this tutorial as well. So for this tutorial, in order to actually you know, get the results here and actually make a chart in ANSYS using the chart function, uh, I'm gonna go into part two, which is uh, basically a copy of the original one, and I'm gonna basically open it up with you here, I'm gonna go through it with you now. So. For this tutorial, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to actually refine a bit our mesh uh, to get a bit more accurate data to, to follow our original uh, input data. So the previous, this mesh is actually too coarse for this. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on mesh, we're going to go into sizing, and we're going to go relevant center, we're going to choose medium. And it's actually going to uh, use a medium mesh on curvature. So wherever there's a curvature, it will actually increase the mesh. And also for our refinement zone, we're actually going to put two. So once you've done that, you can right click on the mesh and generate mesh. So once that's done, now that you can, you can see that the uh, mesh is a lot more refined in our critical region, which is what we want. So next, moving on, we're going to go to the analysis settings. And for, again, for this uh, tutorial, we're going to want to increase the number of sub-steps. So we don't want uh, minimum one. We actually want at least eight sub-steps in order to really capture uh, the data along the curve for the results. So the more we can actually increase this, it'll be more accurate. But for this uh, tutorial, we're going to choose eight. So choose the minimum eight and leave the fixed support for the force. We're actually going to reduce it to 1,600 because the previous one was was too coarse and it was actually way too high of a, of a load. So for this one, we're going to put uh, 1,600 pounds and. Uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to just hit solve. So actually, I already have the solution done and I don't want to wait uh, for it in this video. So I'm just going to go ahead and open uh, my completed version, which is exactly what I just uh, guided you through, except for just it's solved. So once, once you hit solve, um, you'll see here in solution information, your results should look similar to this. So you can see here in green, there is uh, eight sub steps. So the, the green is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's basically the eight minimum that we specified here. So we get a bit more accurate results this way. So now uh, we can go in, we can check out our equivalent strain results. And we can see it's uh, a lot more precise in this refined mesh region here. And maximum principal stress, as you can see, we're pretty much at the limit here with the load that we put. So we're 24. 0.98 uh, kpsi. So, so that's that. So now uh, we're going to get into the plots. So what we're going to do is uh, we're actually going to uh, take the uh, maximum principal stress and our user-defined result, which was EPL1 and EPPL1, which is the elastic and plastic maximum principal results. 
I think I went over it before, but uh, maybe I'll just go over it again here. I'm going to open the uh, mechanical help just to show you. So if we do a search for Epel 1 or Epel um, in solid 85, so as you can see here, these are the equivalent elastic strains, uh, which is e EPL. And EPPL 1 is the maximum plastic strain. So in this case, we're adding the maximum elastic with the maximum plastic to get our total result. Um, but if you want, you could actually just skip the addition and actually just go with the total mechanical strain, which includes the creep strain, and go for EPTO. So you can actually use the, 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 uh, the EPTO command and get th that result instead. So we're going to go ahead and do that, actually. We're going to go du duplicate this result. And here we're going to actually type EPTO1, which includes all the mechanical strains, and we're going to evaluate those results. So there we have it. So this is our, we can ignore the minimum here and just look at the maximum. And for maximum principal stress, again, we'll ignore the minimum for this tutorial and just focus on the maximum. So what we do is we select our maximum principal and our uh, total elastic and plastic strain, hold the control key, select both of them, and then click on this item here, which is a new chart and table. So now we have two objects that are selected and we have our chart. So what we're going to do is we're just going to adjust this chart a little bit to clear up some of the data. So what we're going to do is we actually want on the x-axis, we want our principal strain, our maximum on the x. And uh, what we want is to, we don't want to display the time. So we'll omit time. So that way we have uh, PSI versus strain. And in this case, we, not, we don't care about the minimum principal stress. We just want to show the maximum. And again, here we don't want to show the minimum. We just want to show the maximum. So there it is. So there's our chart. And there is our stress strain curve from uh, maximum. It's basically taking the maximum of the whole model. You could actually choose a different face or body of this, so you can actually uh, clear the selection, clear the generated data, and choose, let's say, a face option or a line, and just get the results on the line. But in this case, I'm taking the maximum of the whole geometry at every time step. So this is plotting both maximums, maximum strain versus maximum stress, and then verse, and, and here you have the time. So. Uh, final step is to compare it with our results. So this is our chart that we have in ANSYS, and you can actually add this to your report as well, uh, or new fi or you can when you generate your report. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the Excel file uh, previously th that was previously done. And uh, so as you can see here, actually I already imported the curve, but I'm going to just delete this and show you from the beginning. So this was our original input data. And now this is the ANSYS output data. So we're going to take the strain here, control copy, and we're going to put the strain on this side. And then we're going to take the maximum principal stress data, copy, and we're going to paste it here. So as you can see, the stress strain output data fits very, very nicely with our input data for the, the model. It actually overpasses it a little bit here, as you can see. Uh, but that's maybe because the, uh, the force is a bit too high. So if you go actually check into the stress probe safety factor and go for the minimum, you can see that the, the, we're, all, we're at one. So we're, we're pretty much at the limit. Uh, although there's no red that's being shown, but it's because we're just above one. So, so that's how you show, that's how basically how you get your, uh, your stress strain data. So as I said before, um, you know, you can choose different, different face options for this. So if you wanted, uh, uh, let's say uh, just instead of all bodies, you just wanted uh, along this line, which was your critical line, and for your maximum principal stress, you wanted, I'm going to remove this, you wanted just this area here. You can even use a probe, so you can actually just go into probe and you can actually you know, choose a point if you wanted to as well. Uh, so we're going to evaluate these results quickly. And uh, so that's our maximum principal stress along this line, and that's our maximum strain. And then our chart uh, should again show is now is now showing uh, the stress strain along this line only, and not uh, considering the whole body. So I think that's about it. I hope I didn't miss anything out. 
and uh, and that's it. So that's F yeah. So uh, let's just see if I missed anything. Uh, no, so I guess uh, I guess that's pretty much all I want to show you guys today. So uh, if you have any more questions, uh, leave it in the comment section. And if this uh, video was helpful, uh, please uh, like and subscribe. So uh, thank you very much. See you.